your friends try to do that. And the topic can be absolutely everything. Boris' first email about Pecha Kucha, I read it on my phone and it read like Pechan Pal. And you know, after much conversation happening about Pecha Kucha, would we realize that it's some Japanese way of doing brief uh, presentations? And the way we are assimilating newer words in our everyday language of DIY works is Pecha Kucha. Very similar to how we've you know assimilated words from all over the place in English language, where English has stolen, snaffled, purloined, pilfered, appropriated, and looted words from all over the place which is basically theft in Old English, Low German, Norman French, Old French, Late Latin and Hindustani. So I just tried to think about every uh, phrase or word or everyday language and where the stories come from, you know. Basically acquired while trade, all conquests and invasions done throughout centuries, a lot of science and medicine and technological developments, ideologies and beliefs very importantly, and rituals, a way of life that was there once, which gave meaning to the language that has now developed, you know. For example, tamarind, uh, tamarind is basically tamare hind. Tamar is uh, date in Persian, and they took uh, imli from here, and they thought this is uh, tamare hind, you know, Indian date. And uh, similarly, jaggery uh, comes from the Sanskrit uh, shakar, and not a lot of us know that. Uh, food is also something very interesting uh, in this idea of uh, roots of uh, language. Uh, they call it pig and cows and sheep, but the food that came in as an export, in, as an import to the country was uh, pork and beef and mutton, uh, you know, and that's why there's a difference between pig and the pork. Uh, we've kn we know that we've given them shampoo, we know that we've given them juggernaut or nirvana, we've also given them something called dulali, which is insane. It comes from the place called Deolali in Maharashtra, it was a British camp where they used to, the British army used to halt and drink and go crazy. And we have Dulali now in Bandra. I don't know if it comes from the same root or not. Yeah, Kulaba also. Similarly, again in invasion, you know, there's something called uh, there's something called Ruti Gong. It's the long service medal given in the British Army. Uh, it comes uh, it comes from the Bengali version of roti, and it was given uh, with the idea if somebody has lasted so long on military rotis, their endurance must be awarded. Uh, a language is deeply enriched in patriarchy. We have a word called hysteria, which is neurotically insane or wildness. And it comes from the Latin hystericus, which means of the womb, you know. So any, it was very, very uh, deeply associated with the uh, female uh, biology, uh, very similar to loony and lunacy, which means madness or silly. And it has a very deep correlation with the menstrual cycle as how lunar cycles uh, have uh, from where the word is derived, you know. On the other hand, patriarchy has given a very strong rational word uh, to the male gender, like seminal. You have seminal research, seminal work of body done, which you know where seminal comes from. Uh, it, it talks about groundbreaking work that has been done or influential work. None, like We could use neutral words, but we've never used ovulary in that sense. So yeah, so that's where ideologies play a role. Then there are proverbs and idioms. This is one of the proverbs I used to have a good laugh in my school days, railing cats and dogs. Uh, where it actually comes from is that in the medieval ages, cats and dogs would hold themselves up on thatched roofs. And when it rained, they slipped down. And that is where it rained cats and dogs. Uh, yeah. <laughs> then uh, pot calling the kettle. Like if you're trying to criticize somebody or something that you yourself are guilty of, you call, you are a pot calling that kettle black. And uh, it was, somewhere used in literature in 1600s, but the idea is that the kettle and the pot and everything was made of cast iron uh, and it all got black when it was kept on the open fire, you know, collecting soot. Once in a blue moon, it's not a blue moon, uh, it is basically two full moons in one month which happens every two to three years and uh, the blue is probably from the word bilu, it's a dated word in English. Bilu means to betray, so they called it the betrayer moon because of which their fasting cycle had some complications, you know. And that was it. Mad as a Hatter, it has references in uh, Alice in Wonderland. But uh, very interestingly, uh, it, it also has its roots in chronic mercury poisoning that used to happen with all the hat manufacturers in England uh, in uh, 1600s because they had uh, mercury, mercurious nitrate in the felt hats, you know, and that is what made them mad. We all go for a ice breaking session before we really go into something big. 
but uh, it ice breakers are exactly that small little ships that were used in uh, winters when the rivers are frozen to crack open the rivers so that the commercial big ships could uh, sail through the entire ports butter up samvan is something that india is given makkhan lagana and uh, this is what we do to our gods is what we do to everybody else we put we throw uh, you know uh, butter balls on gods so that we can seek favors from them and that's what we've been doing all throughout and we've given to the world as well hook or by crook uh, very commonly used crook also very commonly confused with a crooked man or a you know uh, something that who is criminal or lawbreaker but essentially a crook is a long 2 meter long walking stick which was used by shepherds so the idea was that you use both the tools or either of the tools but you get the work done but we think it's a crooked way of doing stuff let your hair down and this is what hairdo is if you really wanting to understand what hairdo was and it you know uh, in paris uh, in the medieval ages they've spent hours getting the hair done because they were looked down upon if they would walk out of their homes without their hair done and after this hours long exhausting day it was letting your hair down was relaxation uh getting out of the wrong side of the bed <coughs> the, you know if you're groggy or something but it uh, it originates there because in those days you know a large number of siblings were sleeping on the same bed and you would jump over the other and you know that would inevitably cause an argument which is something that spoils your mood calling it a day it was initially call it a half day uh, when industrialization was picking up uh, but we took advantage of it and we said we'll just call this a day and that's what i'm calling it a day now <laughs>